playing another Carrie Stevens streamer today. This is called the Black Cat. Very, very similar to one I did recently called the Canary. It has a silver tag body, a little red tail to it, a throat, and black hackles. The Canary had basically the same thing. I think it was black hackles in the tail, yellow throat. But they're very, very similar patterns. It's another basic Carrie Stevens pattern with the different pieces and parts. The wing on this was pre-assembled just like I did in the Canary Wings, which I did a video recently, a supplemental tying video on how I process those, excuse me, process the feathers and glue those together to pre-assemble them. But that is the Black Cat. I'll get started. start the black cat by getting my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad, no excuse me, this is a Partridge CS15 in a number two. A little bit longer. It's a 10x long hook. I'm going to start my thread because this is just a tinsel body. I don't have to worry about a floss that I'm going to darken up or anything. But I do have to consider the fact that I want to get a thread base on here, and that's a long hook to be doing that. So I'm going to start with a 140 denier uh, UTC in black. I'm going to start my thread about an eye length, maybe two from behind the eye of the hook, and start wrapping this down. I just want to get a nice base layer of thread. I will increase that a little bit as I wrap back up before I put on the tinsel body. Bringing this down here to probably about three quarters of the way, two thirds of the way down the hook shank, I'm going to tie in the tag and then apply that and then tie in the tail. Like I said, I'm using this 140 denier simply to go back up and down the hook shank a little bit faster. You could use, if you wanted to, a um, like a Danville 3 odd or something. The body tinsel as well as the tag is a silver tinsel. I'm using a Danville uh, silver and gold mylar tinsel in size 10. And this is a silver body, so I want the gold side up. I'll put in a few wraps, working my way downward a little bit. I want to leave just a little bit of space, maybe about a quarter of a shank length between the point and where I start that. And then I'm going to put four to five wraps in going back down the hook shank to just either even with the point of the hook or just a little bit past it. The five gets me just a little bit past it. And then I'll come back up. This is getting a little short. And then I'll tie that tag in. Thread is separated a little bit. Now I'm going to put the tail in. The tail is just red hackle fibers. I've got a rooster feather here from a whiting American cape. I'm going to strip barbs from both sides of this just to give myself kind of a nice full red tail. I like these because they're a little bit longer than the schloppen. 
helps to mitigate getting too much of a bump on the back end. So I get a clump from one side, and I'll get a clump from the other side here. I get them out 90 degrees from the rachis so that the tips are even. These curlies right here will actually produce kind of a bump under that thread. So I am going to trim all those off. I'm going to even up the tips here with the other clump that I have. Matching those up, I'll have my hackles for my tail. I'm going to tie these in so they're maybe about a half a shank length long. Remember, they're going to be sticking out from here. I don't want them to be more than three-eighths to half an inch maybe behind the bend of the hook. I'm going to get a couple wraps in going forward. Make certain that that is right on top of the hook shank. I'm not going to put any wraps going backwards, and I will cover all that up with the tinsel in just a moment. Sometimes these hackle fibers will flare up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to leave these a little flared, and I want to show you how I deal with that. I'm going to wrap forward. I am going to flatten out my thread here because I can go from one end of the shank of this hook to the other a little bit faster with flatter thread. Nice thing also is it kind of smooths it off underneath because when I wrapped down I kept all the wraps that I put in put in a lot of twist to that thread so it has much more of a corded look along the hook shank whereas now the flatter thread will kind of fill that in and just smooth it out. It's not critical because like I said it's a tinsel body and the tinsel it's going to be a double layer of tinsel and it will cover all that up anyway. Stop with my thread about an eye, one to one and a half eye lengths behind the eye of the hook. And this is where I'm going to tie in the tinsel body. Again, it's that same Danville size 10 mylar gold and silver tinsel. I'm going to get a good 12 to 13 inches of that. It is a silver body, so I'm going to trim the end of my tinsel here with a nice abrupt point to it. See, with that abrupt point there, I can get about half of that tied in along the hook shank, the silver side up, and the reason is that anchors it very well there. I won't pull it out, and when I start to wrap that in, I'll actually wrap that in with the silver side up. I'm going to take some head cement and put it along this thread right here. Work that all the way around. This is going to help to anchor that mylar tinsel to the body so that as I'm fishing this if it happens to break for whatever reason it won't all come unraveled. That's the one downside with the mylar. So I'll bring that around with the silver side up. Now I'm going to wrap this in nice and even wraps right up next to each other. The key to this is keeping the tinsel pretty much at the same angle all the time as you come around. This isn't something that you can come over straight and then angle it this way or that way. In order to keep those, you want to have touching turns. You will get some gaps like this right here where the black thread shows through and that's fine. It will get covered up on the next round when I come back over it. You could potentially use a white thread if you wanted to do one layer of tinsel on this and then if any gaps come it's just white showing which will look a lot like the silver as i mentioned back here with those hackles sticking up 
what I like to do is bring my thread or my tinsel over and then get one wrap. See, notice I'm still at an angle right over the butt ends of that hackle. Then I can bring it around, get 90 degree wrap in to secure that. And notice how it brings those hackles back down into a nice streamlined tail. It also makes certain I don't have any thread wrap showing on the back end. So I bring the tinsel back up. You might have also noticed that when wrapping down this way, some of that head cement squeezed out between wraps, and that's fine. Kind of what I want. I don't want it dripping, but I do want to have some of that squeeze out because that will then anchor the second layer of tinsel down to the hook shank. And this is where that gap in it gets nice and covered up and you don't see it. So you end up with a nice smooth silver body. Shouldn't have any bumps in it. If you're new to doing these types of bodies you probably will. That's because the angle got changed a little. You might be able to see it right here and right up in here, and that's because of the bulk of that tail fibers right in there. They give you, you know, a ramp there you got to deal with, and sometimes the angle of that tinsel changes a little bit. For a fishing fly, I don't think it's going to be that important, but if you're wanting to frame this and have something really, really nice, you know, you may want to either redo that or just take more care as you are down on that end. So with my thread now up by the eye of the hook, I'm going to change over to my finished thread, which is going to be a 6-0 Danville in black. And this is just so that I don't bulk up this area too much. You could do the 140 denier for the uh, the belly as well as the underwing and the throat on this. I find that it does sometimes tend to bulk up the head space a little bit, so I'm just going to switch over. Bringing my thread all the way back down to the end of the head space here, I'm going to tie in my underwing, which is some peacock curl, and the belly, which is some white bucktail. Since the throat's going to be on the bottom here also, I'm going to do the underwing first, then the belly, and then the throat. As I said, the underwing is some peacock hurl. I've got some feathers already processed. You could use some strong hurl if that's all you have. That's fine. I choose six feathers. Depends on you know your taste in terms of how thick you want them to be uh, or how thin. I want to tie these in so that the tips are just the length of the tail. Maybe a little bit longer if you prefer. I just generally, as a rule, go with the same length as the tail. The wings will be just a little bit longer than the tail. So I'll secure those in right on top of the hook shank, keeping my thread right at the end of the head space there. And I'm going to tie in the belly. The belly is just some white bucktail. I want to make certain that I am choosing bucktails that are up either about halfway up that tail to the tip simply because they do not compress as much. I find the, the hair that's about halfway up the tail to the tip will tend to be a little bit straighter. The tips out here are a little bit straighter. They're not as wavy. They don't compress that much, so you end up with a little bit straighter of a belly in your, in your fly. I'm going to clean the short fibers out of this, and then you could put this in a hair stacker if you want. I'm just going to pull these out just to Kind of get some of those short ones out a little bit longer, pull out any real short ones. 
And this, this is going to be sparse anyway. You don't want this to be super full. It just flows underneath the fly and is just to represent kind of a belly. I actually like the tapered look by doing it this way more than, than the stacked look that you get. But it's up to you. Many people just stack them because it's easiest and they go in nice and neat. I want this to be the same length as the underwing. So if it's a little shorter than the tail, this is going to be a little bit shorter. I'm going to bring that right on up underneath. Wrap that in. A few wraps to secure it. And then I'll trim away the butt ends. You don't want any of the bucktail to wrap around the hook shank. You just want it to stay nice and underneath the hook shank. It does flare a little bit and some of that you just can't help. You'll find you'll get some tails where they are nice they don't flare that much but then on others they flare much more so now we're ready for our throat the throat on the black cat is just some black hackle I'm going to use some strong schlop in here I'm going to find a nice feather. I'm going to trim away. I'm just going to cut away this section here that has all this fluff in it. I don't need that. I've got some nice long fibers right here. And I need three clumps. So I'm going to start by peeling off some fibers off one side. I'm going to set those down and I will peel off some fibers from the other side and I will match those up. As I said, I need three clumps, so I'm going to do that three times here real quick. So I'll have my three clumps. The interesting thing is I have tied in in the past and you've even seen probably in some of the videos in the past um, a, a few years ago when I did some Carrie Stevens patterns and recently initially the throat I put in similar to a wet fly where there was just one clump of the hackle fibers right underneath and that was the throat. I have come to find out that she actually tied in three clumps because what she's trying to do is to cover up right at the shoulder area right here. She wants to cover up any of the hook right here showing through. So she's tying a clump of hackle underneath and then the same length in the same direction on each side. And what that does is it tends to come back and cover up that area. So here's my first clump. I'm going to tie. I like it about maybe down halfway down the hook shank. You could go a little shorter if you want. Just a few wraps to anchor that in. Trim away the excess. My next clump is going to go on the side, and I'm going to do your side first. It's going to go the same length and I'm just bringing it right up alongside the head space here and that's where I'll tie that in. You want to make certain that that does not wrap around but as you can see these fibers here will flow backwards and kind of cover the space up so where you tie in the wing here and it all comes to a point you don't get any of that shank that silver tinsel underneath through there. I think this is mostly just to kind of complete the minnow profile, the shoulders up front, so it makes the 
the head space, not just the head of the fly, but the, the head and shoulder space of the fly look a little fuller. At least that's what I think. Same thing on this side, it's about the same length. I'm just going to hold that in on the side, anchor that down. I do like to pull this back just a little because I don't want it really wrapping around the hook shank. Trim away the excess. Now I will tie in those butt ends and smooth this area off because all we have left are our wings. This is just, like I said, getting those butt ends in, filling this in to smooth it off. Because I'm actually going to change over to my finish thread. And the finish thread is two components. There is an orange band in the Black Cat. And I, in other videos, I think I've already mentioned that um, I have discovered that she didn't just use the black to finish the head and put an orange band in, which I had noticed before. That means that the orange is on top of the black and it tends to darken it up. So I'm actually going to use my orange. This is a, actually this is the wrong one. This is a Danville. I'm going to go with it. This is a Danville 6 aught in orange, but it's a fluorescent orange. And I'm going to go with it just because it's going to show up on camera for you a little bit better than a regular orange. I'm just putting a base layer of orange down here. I don't have to get all the way to the back because that's where a black band will be. I'm more concerned about having it nice and covered right in the middle, and then I'm ready to put in my wings. So at this point, I'm ready to tie in my wings, I'm gonna get my thread back just a little bit further towards the back of the head. It is very easy to wrap your thread back further and back further and back further. Be careful with that because the heads on these, even though they're a bit longer and a little bit wider, generally I don't like to go more than a couple of uh, eye lengths. So it's time for the wing. I've already processed the wings on these, similar to how I did in the canary video and there is a supplement out there there will be a link here in this on the uh, video as well as in the description to that video on how i process these rooster feathers and create the wings on these but i have my left and my right together here with those together, and I'm paying particular attention to the tips, making certain those to get, are together. I'm going to hold these up here about where I'm going to tie them in with the, the end of the wing, just the back of the head space. I'm going to trim away the extra rachises here. That gives me just a little nub to go ahead and tie in. I'm going to tie these in one at a time instead of both at the same time. And I'm going to tie the one on my side first so that you can see more or less how that's done. I do want the angle to go up just a little bit, not straight back. I'm going to get this in position, and you'll notice that I don't have it on the top of the head space, nor do I have it on the very side of the head space right here right up in that kind of upper quadrant right here between the top and the side. That gets it going nice and long and straight, and the wing itself is nice and perpendicular on the hook shank. Try not to put too many thread wraps in there. Again, you want to take 
some care to not bulk that up. Getting the other wing in the same position, I'll get a half a dozen wraps in to see that that's where I want it. I want to make certain that they are standing straight up, nice and smooth on both sides of the hook shank. The tails all match up, and notice they're just a little bit longer. I shouldn't say the tails, but the tip of the wings all match up. They're just a little bit longer than the red tail. Now this throat, notice how the throat definitely looks fuller, and it kind of goes in, in with the upper hackles here, so you end up with this whole shoulder area looking a little fuller. Certainly is going to add a little bit more bulk, so when this is in the water flowing back, it's not going to just compress down along the hook shank. But you'll also notice how you don't really see, there's a little bit there, but you don't really see that much of the hook shank on both sides. Now, I may not have the throat technique quite understood or down correctly. That is my understanding how it's done. So at this point, I'm going to use my orange thread to secure both those wings in, making certain that I keep this nice and smooth and secure it. I don't have to worry about going too far back here. The black will cover that up. I'm more concerned about having it smooth with a nice orange in the middle so that when I put the black on the front and the back, you get a nice orange band. Coming down to the eye of the hook, I will put in a two or three turn whip finish just to secure that. Now I'm going to go back to my Danville 6 aught in black. It's up to you how you like to do this. I'm going to attach my thread right in the back area first. Put a few wraps in, bringing my thread over to my side, working backwards to trap that tag and a thread in. Then I can cut away that tag end. With that removed, I can get the black band in. Just take your time with this. Try not to do this too fast because you can very easily get stray wraps going where you don't want them. You want to basically have each band be about a third of the length of the head. I got one little bit of orange right there, and that covers it up. I like to do a whip finish by hand here because I can get my fingers opened up a lot easier to get back on the back side of the head. With that secured in, I can trim away my thread and now I'll get the band up on the front. Same thing, I'll start it right behind the eye of the hook. I'll get a few wraps in, going back, trapping that tag in, and then I can trim away the tag. And then I'll continue to go backwards here, making certain that I'm getting a nice dark band of black. I don't want to bulk it up, so I don't want to have a bump of thread up here. Keep that in mind. Now I will 
I actually flattened my thread out just a little bit. I'm only going to put about a five turn whip finish in here. Trim away my thread. And we'll get a little head cement here, and that will complete. I want to try and get these wings separated a little bit, and that peacock curl back down in there. It, you know, I don't think it's important in terms of fishing these flies, but this is the internet, so I have to make this look just perfect. I may also have too many fibers in that throat, but it certainly does kind of fill that space up a little bit more than just having, um, you know, one little clump of fibers in there. So I'm going to get some head cement on this and soak, let that soak in real well to help solidify it. Then I'm going to come back and put a coat of clear lacquer over it. I'm not going to put a big glossy head on this. I just want that lacquer to seal it up and protect it a little bit. It gives it a little bit of a sheen. So that is the black cat. Again, very basic Carrie Stevens pattern with the, the belly and the underwing, the tinsel body. She had a lot of patterns that are very, very similar to this one. Canary is very similar to it. As a matter of fact, if you look at it, it's just yellow hackles. Not certain why this has just four hackles and like the canary was six hackles. The only thing I can think of is four hackles of yellow maybe became more translucent. I don't know. All kinds of things to read about, learn about, and discover. So that's the black cat. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.